Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Joel. And this is a stable life. <laughs> to pick things up where we left off, we just got the hay put in the barn. We already took our break for lunch. Next up, we have feeding this afternoon, as well as grain. And we also had some hiccups come up when it comes to getting feed. Not to mention Gavin got stuck inside the hay mow. So let's check in with him and see how it's going. It's been three years. <laughs> I'm almost out. We're getting closer every day. Here, you want a hand? Yeah. All right, so normally I like to take the horse trailer up to our local feed supplier and pick up our entire uh, feed supply in one setting, uh, per setting per month. And it's at that point that uh, I can grab everything, put it on a pallet, load it up with the skid steer, take it down here, and unload it right directly into our feed bins. The grain can be safely stored in one of our many feed containers. We used to store our feed in bags, but if the bags ever were to get wet during the winter time, we tend to have problems with rodents eating the bags and then getting into the feed. And as you could imagine, the clients don't like hearing that rodents have gotten into the horse feed, so we had to fix that issue very quickly. What we've come up with is these containers. They do great. They keep all of pests from insects to rodents out of the feed. They keep the feed secure and safe and dry. We have not had a single um, feed container spoil, which is really nice. So we really like them. Much easier on me because instead of having to grab all the feed out of the bags per week, now I can grab all the feed, dump it into those bins, and then we simply go through each bin through the month and we keep track of what bin is oldest to what bin is now newest. Now we reserved a few bags from them last month and that's still there. So I'm gonna be going up today with my car, just picking up a few bags to tide us over to Tuesday. And then Tuesday is going to be the day that I go up and get the horse feed. The donkeys have been in all day and mom took the blankets off. You guys saw that in the other video. We still gotta give Buster his medicine for this afternoon. But before we do that, Gavin, we need to measure out. So what's exciting about you guys being with me on afternoon feeding is that measuring out in the afternoon, it, even though it has some similarities, there's actually quite a lot of differences. For a start, pretty much all of the medicines and supplements and vitamins that we give all the horses, we give it all in the afternoons. So we're going to be taking you guys on a little stroll with us as we measure out all of our feed. And I'm going to be telling you what all the supplements are that we're giving all our horses why they're getting those supplements. This right here. That's about, that's it, about, hey, can you say this? Uh, yeah, methyl sulfonyl methane. Ooh! It's very salty. Hey, how'd you learn where to say that? It tastes very salty. I've tried it before. All right, Gavin, uh, do you want to measure out and I can get the supplements? Yeah, man. Okay. Sure thing. <laughs> you know what to do. I don't know why you're I've acting like you fed before. I don't know what to do. Don't be acting. All right, so first horse up on our list is actually Tucker. Now, Tucker, actually gets a scoop of remission. And I'm not even gonna pretend that you guys know what that is. So let me just scoop it out. Woo! Okay, that smells like paint. <laughs> <laughs> Smell that? It smells like paint. It does. That's crazy. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Woo. Mix it in good. Swirler. Remission is basically important because it gives a horse a lot of the vitamins and minerals that they don't normally get uh, from just grass or hay. So, Tucker is on remission. That takes us to our next horse, which literally is the next one on the list, and that's Rebel. Now, Rebel has a problem walking. Uh, I don't know exactly what's going on, but you can you can basically liken it to arthritis, and in order to help Rebel, uh, with that, we give him a supplement called Flexmore. It uh, helps his joints, and it allows him to be able to move more freely. It's not like a cure-all thing. It doesn't fix it. This is what it looks like. It's pretty much pelleted. And that just smells like grain, so that's nice. Mix that in nice and good for Rebel, so that way he gets everything. Oh yeah! Ooh, that was good, Gavin. I like the dance. All right, that takes us to our next horse that's gonna be getting a supplement, and that's Danny. Now, Danny actually gets this stuff, which you have seen many times here on this channel. The acronym is MSM, but I've actually learned how to say the full name, which is methyl sulfonyl methane, and it looks just like sugar or salt. Take your pick. It pretty much looks like either or. I say sugar. My wife says salt. Gavin, what do you say? Sugar or salt? I'd say sugar. Sugar? All right. That's two for sugar. Awesome. Now, what uh, methyl sulfonyl methane is, is it's basically a supplement that's similar to Flexmore. It's not the same thing. This is something that you use more on a daily note, and it is uh, there for Danny's joints. Now, Danny doesn't have any problems with his joints. 
Um, but Danny is a gaming horse. He's used very commonly in Gymkhana. So the MSM helps him for when he's in those situations that it doesn't negatively impact his health. So we give him that every day, all year round. Next horse, which is Casino. Woohoo! Now Casino, he gets this stuff, which you guys have seen many times. This is for his coat and his hooves. Looks like brown sugar. Smells like grain. Oh yeah, that's right guys. It's ultra finish. Ow! Ah, so exciting. You know, even though we're cousins, sometimes I feel like we're brothers with how we act. Oh, back to you. Mm. Okay. Ooh. Next horse is Skywalker. Not every single horse in our stable gets supplements. So the only horses that I'm listing off are the ones that are getting supplements. There's a lot of others that you can see Gavin measuring out in the background that, that don't get supplements. But the next one that does is Skywalker. And he gets a supplement that is purely for the hoof. It promotes hoof growth and helps them to have not cracked hooves. Uh, this is what it looks like. And smells like processed grass. Not manure, but if you take grass and process it and then turn it into a pellet, that would be what it would smell like. The next horse that's gonna be getting a supplement is Duke, and he gets the same thing, Horseshoe Secret. Gavin, I'm waiting for you. I'm sorry. Mix it in good. Yes, sir. And that takes us to the next guy, which is Weather. A scoop of Aquinity, which looks very similar to powdered sugar. Scoop here, see? Powdered sugar. <laughs> it's funny how things all look similar, but uh, it's not. Equinity is basically something that helps them with muscle growth and with bone growth. So he gets a little scoop of that. Big horse, little scoop. And he also gets a scoop of Horseshoe Secret, which is similar to what Skywalker and Duke get. This promotes his hoof growth. Being that he's a draft percher on cross, uh, his hooves do need a little bit of added help than your normal horse because uh, they don't get shod as often, and it's a lot harder to get them shod. There you go. And that's pretty much all the horses that get supplements. All right, now that we have all the feed measured out, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the stalls. You guys know the drill. Now, in the afternoon, we actually don't need to put any hay in the stalls. They still have some hay left over from the mornings. So afternoon feeding is pretty simplistic. It's pretty much grain in the stalls, let the horses in, check the horses and make sure they're all okay and then you rotate them out into each other's pastures. Some horses stay in the same pasture, others get rotated into a different one. If you're curious who's where, here's a little board explaining with which horse is where. You can simply just pause the video and it'll tell you where's who's where at what time of day. Boy, do you guys look so cute with your blankets off too. Buster getting that long hair, I like it. All right, Gavin should be here at any moment. I've noticed a few have a question that have asked this and I, I pretty much addressed it, but I wanted to just readdress it being that we've had a, a nice amount of new viewers come into the channel. Speaking of, if you're new, welcome. It's happy to have you guys with us. Some of you have noticed that some of our stalls have these bars on them and some of the stall doors are open. And I've also noticed some of you have said, why do you need to have bars? inside the stalls like this. Why can't you just have this open? And yes, while you are correct that there are stables that have a more open design uh, that don't use the bars, you'll notice that that open design is shaped. They have a wall that is shaped and contoured so that a horse that's in one stall cannot reach and bite a horse that is in the other stall by over the top or through. The bars are there so that the horses can feel that there's another horse there. They can see that there's another horse there, but they cannot reach that horse. What's nice about these bars is that they offer the convenience and niceness of being able to see each other. The horses are able to see each other, but they're narrow enough that they can't fit their noses through and bite the other horse 
in the other stall. They're also more open than a glass pane because they allow air to flow through. So during the summertime, we can have fans in all the stalls and it creates a channel of air to flow through keeping the horses cool. So yes, while I understand that some of you may not like the look of having the bars between the stalls, we personally right here do enjoy them and we think that they are a major upgrade over having the cattle panel between each stall. But that's the nice thing about us. We all may have different opinions, but we can all agree that the horse's health is the most important thing. Now that that's all done, let's move on to letting in the horses. We're gonna start with Tucker. I, all right, I, yeah, you can let Tucker in. <laughs> he really likes Tucker. <laughs> For anybody that's wondering, hey Joel, how come you don't just give Buster the pill? If you guys want to know, if you don't, don't believe me that Buster won't eat it, here we go. You go, Buster. Take the pill. Take the pill. Take the pill. Good boy. All right, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't expect him to chew it. I don't think he was expecting to chew that. Hey, boys, I got some squeezy buns. Squeezy buns. Do what, Joel? What the heck? What? How did I get here now? I'm I'm in one of. The, how am I in a feeder? Joel, get over here right now! Here he comes. We're gonna get the answer to this. Yeah, now we're talking. Joel, what did you do to me? Why? How am I in a feeder right now? I don't know. Why'd you get in a feeder? Good point. You guys ever get like a hole in your sock when you're trying to walk? It sucks. I have one right on my big toe and it burns. <laughs> All right guys, I got a quick question for you. Who's ready for some math? So we've got four feeders and three bales. How do we divvy up the bale equally per feeder? We're gonna take the whole bale, throw in the first one. And then we're gonna cut it. Remember to always take out your twine. How else is your uncle gonna use it to fix his fences? So you may have figured out any number of ways really to do this, but what we figured out is we take three quarters of a bale and put it in each feeder. That's the first feeder. I've got one quarter left. We're gonna put that in the second. Now that we're here at our second, we're gonna split out that quarter and we're gonna grab this bale. We're gonna chuck it in the third. Now that we're at the third feeder, we're actually gonna take half. We'll leave half in this feeder and then we're gonna take the other half and put it in the other feeder. That means that now the first feeder and the second feeder each will have three quarters of a bale in them. And the fourth feeder is the easiest feeder. The fourth feeder will then take a quarter, just one quarter, out. We'll put that in the third feeder. And then we have three quarters for this feeder. Now we got a three quarters in the first, three quarters in the second, three quarters in the third, and three quarters in the fourth. Alrighty guys, that is gonna be it for afternoon feeding. Let's go get some grain. So it turns out the uh, grain store was closed. Probably should have checked that before I headed out, but uh, we got hot chocolate. And it is on that lovely note that we're gonna be ending the video for today, guys. If you haven't already, subscribe and hit that like button. And as always, we'll, we'll see, see you, you in, in the, the next, next one. one.